All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're about ready to get started. Um, first, let's do some introductions and cover a few basics. My name is Elizabeth Martinez, and I am the Learning Experience Coordinator here at HCSS. This web webinar is gonna be recorded and the recording will be available next week uh, to rewatch. So if you wanna send it out to anyone, um, you'll be able to, we'll send you that link. Anyone who's registered will receive that link. Um, many of you are familiar with GoToWebinars, but if you're not, the application can be used to post questions. Um, one second, I'll show you guys what that question box looks like. Um, so you can post questions. Um, we will be answering those at the end of the webinar. Lastly, to make sure that everyone can hear us loud and clear, um, if you could please click on the raise hand function to acknowledge that you're coming through loud and clear. All right, I'm seeing hands go up. That's awesome. Great. All right, well, thank you for that. Now, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to JP. Okay, thanks, Elizabeth. Hi, everybody. Um, well, good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here. Um, we have a, a good program. Um, let me show you the agenda a little bit. So here is the agenda for today. We're going to start with introductions. Um, then uh, we want to talk a little bit our vision about you know our vision at HSS and um, a little bit about Aerial. And then you know our goal today is to share the journey from you know um, Interstate Rock products and also Comanco. I know that you know um, you guys are having working with the tech, with the drone technology for a while and also using Aerial. So uh, we want you guys to share your story with our audience. And finally, you know, um, I want to share some insights about the new version and uh, talk about uh, the alpha program. And finally, we're going to open up for Q&A. Uh, feel free to share your questions, you know, uh, in the question box, like Elizabeth said. Um, if I see any question that is relevant, uh, we may have a chance to ask that question during the um, presentation, but otherwise we're going to wait until the end. But I wanted to start hearing your questions. So um, this is the agenda. Again, um, I want to thank you know Elizabeth for your help. There are other folks like also I wanted to thank uh, before we start uh, like Tracy Howard, uh, Femi Arillo, David Sue, Lauren Hill uh, for helping with this webinar. And then I'm going to mention other people as we go. But um, that's it. Pretty that still folks are signing up. So. Um, Let's start with introductions, and if you don't mind, Kaison, uh, you can go first. Sounds good. Hey everyone, my name is Kaison Spenloff. Um, I right now I'm studying at uh, civil engineering at Southern Utah University. Um, I've been a drone pilot for the last three years. Um, I've got lots of experience with uh, processing programs for these drones, and then um, I'm working at Interstate Rock Products in Southern Utah. Great, and can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your company? So uh, Interstate Rock Products is located in uh, Hurricane, Utah. Uh, we are a general engineering and building contractor, um, and we work mostly Utah, Nevada, and Arizona. Um, we also have a materials division where we focus on ready mix, sand and gravel, asphalt, and then we also have ready rock wall systems that we build. Um, and then we also have an Interstate Homes, which is a sister company kind of focused more on um, building um, residential homes. So that's our company. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next, you guys, uh, Comanco. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm going to start here. Um, I'm Evan Bao. I'm a QC engineer here with Comanco. I kind of like Kaisa, I got my Part 107 commercial license maybe about three years ago. I started at Comanco almost four years ago now after graduating from uh, with a petroleum engineering degree from Texas A&M. 
So I'm not really sure how I ended up at an environmental company in Florida, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, I had a little bit of surveying experience and then just kind of due to need and just being kind of young, my boss and CEO kind of just threw me into the drone world and told me to figure it out. And it kind of took us a while to get there, but I think, you know, we're pretty comfortable with where we're at right now and kind of love seeing where HCSS Aerial will kind of take us in the future. Thanks. Greg? Greg, right. can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Thank you, Evan, uh, Kyson, and JP. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Greg Pignataro. Um, QAQC over at Command Co as well. I've uh, been working with the firm here for about six years. And uh, uh, civil engineering background, myself, environmental. And uh, yeah, like Evan said, we kind of were uh, a turnkey contractor here down in Florida that you know uses surveying in general for a lot of different applications. And um, you know, decided to kind of take on some of these uh, the drone and UAV as it was starting to make its way into the industry um and it really you know messed it up more than we'd like to admit but it kind of got us here today um and that you know we really want to kind of leverage technology in general and uh, that lines up well with hcss we're fortunate to be a part of this today if you have any questions um whether it be you're just starting out trying to kind of hone in what you have going um uh, we're we're here to kind of help and share our experience with it uh, like JP said, and, and um, you know how we've kind of partnered up with HCSS and get the best product out there for for construction industry in general. So looking forward to today. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and I want to thank uh, Mark Top, who is connected, your CEO, and also Chase Stratton, uh, Kaison, your CEO as well, for your commitment. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself for those of you who are new to HSS. Uh, I'm JP, I work in strategy, uh, 20 years of experience in R&D, innovation and product management. I was working with the area since inception early this year at UGM, and we can talk about that. Uh, previously, I was working in, in a similar role with HSS plans. Many of you um, may know plans. To the solution, I also help launch the project management and several IoT or that since 2015. Um, so for all of you who are new, uh, this is uh, our office and we're very excited. If you see on the left side, uh, this is our new building. Uh, this is our campus in Sugarland. I know that Evan, you have family, right, in, in Sugarland. So we hope that one day you can visit us. <laughs> and Kason, right. we, we, we would like for you to play soccer with, with us. Uh, but we have more than 4,000 companies in the heavy civil space. Uh, we were founded in 1986, so more than 30 years in business. And we have more than 80,000 users across North America with our applications. Um, we, you know, and, and we like that our software is built from the ground up to be easy. Uh, you know, we are looking for you guys um, to, to help you um, drive productivity, but also to, to be easy to use. Uh, as an example, we have more than 30,000 foreman submitting 1 million time cards every month with our applications. So that's our background. Uh, if you ever are in Houston, in Sugarland, feel free to stop by. So we cover the introductions, right? I think that um, the, we, we, we cover the first part. Are you guys ready for the next part? Should I click? Okay, let's click. Wow, we have a drone with the... Happy birthday, Kaison. It's your birthday, <laughs> right? <JP. laughs> it is. Okay, well, hey, uh, we appreciate Kaison being here. It's his birthday, but he, he committed to be here. So we have a drone flying this cake, so uh, we make sure that you get it in, in, in Utah, okay? Sounds good, thanks. Thanks for, uh, to Elizabeth. She came up with this uh, nice um, design. Okay, so let me share a little bit before we, we go to the, um, the, 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 the experience with the Comanco and um, Interstock about our vision at HSS and a little bit of aerial. Um, in 2015, uh, we were working uh, at HSS with the team to kind of define a little bit in a graphic manner our vision, right? And our goal is to, you know, make construction projects work better, right? With up-to-date data, 
you know, can be manual entry, right? Like time cards or also machine driven, uh, machine enter, machine enter data. Uh, we want to increase productivity, improve communication, improve progress tracking, and avoid rework, right? Reduce rework and of course reduce risk. Um, so if you see, uh, we have a, a, a good portfolio that help in the shop, in the office, in the job site. Uh, the reason also I wanted to show you this is because we're very excited to see that aerial fit very well in our vision, helping not only in the job site or also in the office, but also in your query, in your plans. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we also want to help you to improve the communication you know, with your owners, project owners, or with your subcontractors across the project life cycle. So you know, even if pre-construction, during construction, or you know, during the maintenance phase of the of the projects. So this is our uh, vision as a company. This is where we're going, and Aerial um, that I'm going to show you a little bit here. Um, it's a cloud-based software that we launched in uh, January this year, and we were working uh, with many folks. Uh, that you know, is built for teams. So again, uh, you can share information not only with your team in your company, but also with uh, external uh, parties. Um, we leverage drone images, you know, you fly the drone, 24 hour max, and we create a 3D model. And there are many use cases for this software that you're going to learn um, during this uh, presentation, from capturing quantities, tracking progress, uh, performing inspections, uh, helping you with documentation, um, and also, you know, um, the, the, the application is drone agnostic, and we can talk more about that. Maybe as you guys uh, share your story, you can also share what type of drones are you guys using. Uh, but this is kind of like, in a nutshell, um, the idea behind Aerial. Um, since we start, we launched two new versions. I'm going to give you some details about um, the newer version today, and also some ideas about the upcoming roadmap. Um, so with this in mind, if you don't mind, Kaison, again, happy birthday. It's all yours. And I will Sounds switch good. in for you the slides, right? Yeah, go ahead. Sounds good. Thanks, JP. So to start off, um, to answer your question, I wanted to say, so I have been flying the DJI, DJI Mavic Pro. Um, and then right now we're just in the process. We just got our DJI Phantom 4 Pro. And so that's what, what we use for our company to fly. Um, However, to go and talk about HCSS Aerial, I want to make sure before I started that everyone understands that the pictures that are in the, um, the slides that I'll be sharing, that those are pictures that I have used um, as I've been experiencing and using HCSS Aerial. Um, as, so I just want to kind of focus in on four parts of HCSS Aerial. It's, it has a lot of functions, um, but I want to make sure that these parts are clear. Um, so to start off, I'm going to talk about alpha testing. Um, what that consists of, and then I'll go through and explain survey grade topographic maps, um, stockpile calculations, and then project progress. Go ahead, JP. Thanks. So to start off, when we do alpha testing, um, we've had the opportunity as we were looking into HCSS Aerial, they invited us to be a part of their alpha testing where we were able to go and fly some projects. Um, after we flew them, we were able to go and, and process them and, and actually get to use the software and see how, you know, all the functions and how they work. But I wanted to really mention um, the HCSS Aerial team, um, not only with alpha testing, but just in general, they're very engaged in, in what we're going through as clients, what we're learning, things that we feel can be improved. And it's been awesome to be able to get to know JP and Caesar and Daniel and to be able to work with them specifically and see them face to face um, through our video chats to make sure I understand um, the program the best I can and that they're getting the feedback that they need. Go ahead, JP. So um, just to kind of give an idea, we've been testing for about four months and over the past four months we've had quite a few different ideas or things that we've wanted to see. Um, we asked for an accuracy report for each flight on May 12th, and we were able to receive that within about a week. Um, and then we were also, and some of the flights that we were doing, we were using local coordinate systems for our projects. And that was kind of tricky. There, was, there wasn't there was a feature yet for local coordinate systems. And so that's something that we, we talked about with them on May 12th as well. And we received it by July 21st, you know, 
two months, they were it was their turnaround for that for us to be able to get some local coordinate systems. So same with software training. I wanted to make sure I understood what the software was and how I could use it um, to the best of my abilities. And I asked for that on June 16th and was able to receive that on the 24th. And then the last one that um, we had asked for was the need for a flight app. Um, a lot of softwares have it, but the reason I felt it was necessary was because it would give you all the settings that you needed for your drone. Um, make sure that every image, every flight that you did, that all the settings were correct so that when you went to process, everything was set up correctly. Um, you weren't going to have anything that popped up, you know, randomly where you're going to have to go and spend more time on it. And so that was something that we'll be able to see uh, shortly. Go ahead there, JP. Thanks. So one of the things I want to talk about is a survey grade topographical map. Um, it's something that we use a lot in our company. We do a lot of flights for um, in-house projects where we fly land that we own. Um, some of it's, you know, two acres and we go clear up to like 50 acres of land at a time where we're flying to try to get um, a good topographic, topographic map to use kind of for our existing grade or to get some comparisons. You can see on the left side of the screen, I've got the GCP accuracy report. And this is something, this flight specifically was probably not as accurate as I, I would have wanted. But it's something to see, you know, you can see where the green, the green numbers are, you can see how accurate you're getting uh, for your results and where you might have some issues or errors that you need to fix. And so this is something that um, we use a lot in our company and we've really, really enjoyed it. It's been something that's we've seen a lot of progress in. Go ahead, JP. So one of the main features that that we use when it comes to HCSS Aerial. There's a lot of functions that we love inside that we don't have to export to get a lot of our data. Um, but a lot of times we want to be able to take the data and put it into another software. And that's where um, HCSS Aerial is super compatible um, when it comes to other programs. So one of the things we do is we take this, on the left you can see an image from HCSS Aerial and we take all of the ortho images and we export them along with the uh, contour files, shape files, or whatever file that we need. And then we're able to import them into AutoCAD and it's super smooth and simple, but then we're able to get our surface that then we use to double check our designs or even to, to design off of, just depends on the situation. So that's something that we've really loved. Um, one of the other features is the stockpile calculations. I know a lot of programs have a stockpile calculation tool, but this is a spot where I've seen HCSS Arial um, exceed or improve a huge amount. Um, I know it's usually the calculation seems to be, you know, it's, it's a very simple tool, um, but there's a lot of different features within it that I want to share from the next slide. Um, but this one, I want to make sure you understand when it comes to, I've, I've been out in the field surveying, and when it comes to surveying, sometimes stockpiles are the hardest ones to do, um, depending on how big they are. And they're kind of scary. You gotta get, you know, around the base of a stockpile, you've gotta climb up on top and make sure you get every single ridge. Um, and, you know, a lot of times that takes, you know, it can take a couple hours, and then you've gotta go back into the office and make sure your points, you remember what all your points meant, and you make sure that you get the right, you know, the right um, surface that you need. But HCSS Aerial makes it easy. All you do is you take your drone out, you get it up in the air. If you need to set ground control points, you can. Um, you have maybe a 30 minute flight and then you just put the images into the processing software. And the next day you've got results. You can go in and you can see, you know, how much of a cut or fill how much material do you have in the, in the different piles you collect? The last thing I wanted to mention was um, down on the image, there's a spot where it says road base, there's a blue dot. Um, but I wanted to mention that they've got a cool feature where you can create multiple stockpiles and then put them into groups. So that when you create a report, you can see all the stockpiles you need to. And so that's a super awesome feature that we're excited to keep using. So lastly, we'll see if this video will play. 
um, I wanted to talk about project progress. So this is something our company hasn't used a lot, but we're trying to get it into. But this flight was taken um, March 18th of 2019. And then we've got two other flights, the sept September 26th, and then another one the next year. So this year, in, uh, May 6th. But so you can go between the flights and see how they look. But it's amazing that you can then go and be able to compare between the flights. So you can see before we didn't have a road or a bridge. And then you can see the comparison where, hey, we're starting to see a road. We're seeing that the bridge is getting built. And so this is something that we're trying to get used to use more as we are tracking, hey, where are we at on our project? Where do we have piles that we might need to go in um, and use on other projects maybe or take off site? So it's a good way to compare between months or however often you guys decide to fly. Um, you can see there's a couple other features that I want to talk about. On the right hand side, you've got kind of your arrows and you've got a line, your box, and then a point that looks like a, um, something you'd see on Google Maps. Those give you these different features. And this one gives you the ability to compare between, um, see a profile of this road and compare it between the flights. You can see one flight looks like it might have been a little off that bottom one. But when we compare between the most um, September 26th and March 18th, you can see one was really rough grade as an existing grade went back and then after so long we were able to grade it to the point that we could start looking at maybe paving so this is something i've loved is the ability to be able to then also create a report and show the owners of the project hey this is where we're at um we still have this much fill and so this is this is something i've really enjoyed to see you have anything else for me jp that you want me to share First, you know, I want to again thank you for your comments. I think it was a pleasure to work with you, Kaison. Um, I like how you track record of all your requests. I didn't know that we have so <laughs> tight deadlines, but I enjoy working with you, and I know that you have more ideas for this program, and I wanted to for you to share maybe later after Comanco. Uh, but again, guys, like Kaison said, there are different solutions in the market. Our goal is very simple. We want to make the best solution for heavy civil. As you know, this is our focus in, in the market. The good news is that not only aerial, we have an opportunity. We're going to invest a lot of resources in the next year to make it even better. Uh, but as you know, we want to leverage the rest of the HSS software, and I'm going to be talking about that later, how we can also integrate HSS aerial with the rest of the HSS software. But this is what I have so far for you, Kaison. Let me go back to Comanco a little bit. And, uh, and then I will ask you some questions if you don't mind, okay? Sounds good, thanks. So, um, let me see if this is working. Uh, just, okay, so you guys, this is your first slide. Um, Comanco, if you wanted to go ahead, please. Sure. I'll start off here, Kyson, great job. Impressive uh, flights and, and data collected from there. Evan and I are probably gonna take just the next five, 10 minutes here to talk about more kind of fundamental things about aerials in general. Um, like I said, we're, we're a contractor ourselves, so the practicality of it, you know, is always important. You know, HESS does a phenomenal job at giving us all the bells and whistles and the and the resources that we need to to then be able to apply it, right? You know, if you're gonna be using this stuff, how is it gonna translate into, you know, tangible things or efficiencies for us? And, um, you know, Comanco in general has been a, a customer and, and a believer in HCSS for probably over 20 years now, H, uh, JP. Um, starting with heavy bid, heavy job, dispatcher, um, most recently safety plans, and then we've been fortunate to be a part of the aerial program. but we, we saw just in general, you know, obviously as a contractor and surveying is a big part of that in heavy civil, you know, the speed, the safety aspect of it, you know, it, it's a it's a tedious job and, and these UAVs really do improve on that process in general. So for us, it was a it was an internal investment. 
Um, you know, the pretty big quantity, you know, takeoff uh, stuff from when you get a, a plan set, you know, naturally, this is not a dig on engineers, but they have to use that to then build the rest of it. So that survey taken a while back, um, aerial just updates for progress for sure. Uh, progress takeoffs for quantities for billing purposes and verification that has helped us uh, tremendously for kind of, you know, maybe battles with ownership or something like that. And then if we have subcontractors on our job site, so it was really kind of an internal uh, endeavor at first. And then with, you know, that process, we realized, you know, this isn't, it, it's not a silver bullet. You know, if you're going to be replacing the base rover typical with this, there's going to be some nuances to it. And, um, you know, that's the part of our journey to use JP's words with HCSS that they've really been receptive to you know, the quality portion of it, you know, the accuracy for a contractor like us doing hundreds of acres, you know, a tenth matters, you know, as far as money goes when it comes to moving, you know, dirt or what we're billing. So that really needed to be there for us to kind of make a transition. And, and I'll leave, you know, kind of the ins and outs in that process to Evan in the next slide. But anything here we're here to kind of you know answer questions and and you know real tangible stuff of how does this program help us along the way and and it certainly does it's been it's been a taken well by hcss to look through that contractor's lens um and and make sure that it's you know not just another bells and whistles feature it really is a process efficiency uh for whatever program what applications and I guess I'll, I'll kind of end with, you know, once you get there and you use programs like Arial and you start to internally kind of see some of those, we've been fortunate enough to, you know, generate some different avenues of revenue from, from clients that, you know, we can, you know, pre, pre-design topographic survey. We perform those for engineers. Um, if they have other projects going on, verifications, it, the, the, the applications are really boundless. Um, and that's been, that's been a, the fun part about this. So, you know, when you, you see the features like uh, Kyson kind of showed earlier and JP is going to get into a lot more, um, know that, you know, the behind that has really been a deep dive into, you know, cradle to the grave. You get the bid, you know, you perform this work, you got progress throughout it. And then we'll, we'll touch on kind of at the end, I think, JP, how does that integrate back into some of those other HCSS uh, programs um, to kind of streamline that cycle, if you will. So. Just another tool that we're really excited to kind of, you know, put in our toolbox here. And uh, I think it's got a really good momentum so far. Um, so without, you know, further ado, I think, Evan, maybe if you can touch on a little bit more kind of the progress of what, you know, is built into this aerial program. And then that'll give, you know, folks online here a little insight on how to maybe use some of these things that we're going to talk about in a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Greg. And so kind of as Greg just really detailed out for us, I'm going to kind of run through, you know, a step by step of kind of what we currently do to get to the accuracies we need and then kind of where we foresee it going with HCSS Aerial. Um, you know, it took us quite a few, you know, tries. Most of this was learned through failure and kind of just, you know, doing it again and again until we finally figured out the right ways to do it. And so kind of, you know, we, as Ky or I guess I should start with, we typically fly with a um, DJI Phantom 4 RTK drone or a Matrice 600 Pro. We also have a couple of DJI Phantom 4s just as backups. And so we fly using the photogrammetry method, which is kind of what we detailed out, just taking pictures and then using ground control points and checkpoints to kind of make sure the accuracy is correct. And so obviously, you know, first thing, when we go do a flight is you got to have kind of a pre-flight plan of checking, you know, your airspace, checking the, you know, current existing topography out there, making sure, you know, with photogrammetry, if there's grass laying out there, if there's tall grass, if there's water, we've kind of just experienced really bad results over those. Or obviously with grass, it's just going to read the top of the grass. But especially with water, one time we realized the reflection of like the sun off of the water was kind of really messing with our photos and giving us bad accuracy like that. And so kind of just taking you know a couple hours day before two days before and really kind of knowing what you're flying is obviously really important and that's typically we will pull up you know 
either you know Pix4D first or kind of just the Google Maps to look at it as long along with kind of our project team out there. Um, after that, you know, we'll go to the site day of, actually fly the mission. We'll first typically go set out using a you know base rover or just the rover GPS, set out our control points, a couple of checkpoints, and then that's kind of used later on to tie in these pictures because when we fly right now, if you don't have RTK, there's no corrections or anything. And so you got to use these points almost. They're kind of, they were described to me and it really clicked for me kind of way back when as they're really almost like pins that pin down your orthogram, ortho mosaic picture onto the right locations for us. And so we'll do that kind of in our Trimble software, but then fly the mission in DJI Ground Station Pro, which is like the app on the controller that we like. After the flight, while we're still on site, we'll typically bring the pictures into a Pix4D and do kind of an initial processing. This is just really, once again, through lots and lots of trial and error, mostly error. Um, you know, we come back to the office, drive two hours after the flight, realize, oh no, we missed, you know, a couple of, you know, 100 square feet on the side of a boundary that was really important, or the UAV for whatever reason didn't take a couple of pictures and we're, you know, skipping kind of a pass that we need to be at, that we need in there for the accuracy. And so, that's been something you know we've kind of discussed with JP and HCSS Ariel. And they've been, like Kyson stated, really receptive to our feedback and kind of hope integrating stuff that we've kind of failed at into their software to kind of help us through that. And so we'll do an initial processing once again to make sure we don't we're not missing anything before we leave. And that's done in Pix4D, and we'll come back to the office. And kind of do the final processing of this is kind of tagging all the control points, tagging the checkpoints, looking at the accuracy report that Kyson kind of showed earlier and verifying that, you know, we're within our tenth of tolerance that we usually look for. And then that's usually we'll do that in PIX4D and then export that CAD file out to AgTech, which is kind of our AgTech 4D takeoff software where we'll do whatever calculations, you know, we need whatever the project manager or client customer needs from us, we'll do it in AgTech typically, and then spit that back out in a PDF to uh, our you know, client customer or project manager, and then they'll import that into like our accounting software, heavy job productions. And so really kind of the point of all this is we're going through a lot of different software through here, Pix4D, DJI, AgTech, you know, PDFs, heavy job, Spectrum. And the real value we kind of see in HCSS Aerial is just tying it all under one umbrella and you just kind of have everything in one spot there's no more kind of just jumping here jumping here you might forget to do certain one thing because you don't have you know pix 40 on whatever laptop you brought out that day and so just having that all under one umbrella i think is huge huge value for us and like kyson stated just the you know ability and willingness to listen to our feedback and to integrate it quickly into kind of what we're asking for i think jp is about to kind of detail that out on the new update we asked for checkpoints because that's kind of how we verify accuracy and that was you know taken and integrated really quickly for us and then furthermore kind of i think also what uh jp is going to touch on is the integration with other hcss products that's going to be huge for us you know we as greg kind of talked about we've been using heavy bid, heavy job, dispatcher, plans, safety for, you know, since I've started here for sure, since probably way, almost when I was born. And so, you know, just being able to see all that tied together will provide a huge value for us of being able to kind of fly a survey and just have that production from last week kind of almost get updated and verified in heavy job and then spit out into Spectrum will be, will be huge for us. Well, that's good. Thanks for sharing that, Evan and, and Greg. Um, again, uh, it's a pleasure to work with you guys. I want to again thanks, thank to Mark Top. I know he's in the call. He's your CEO. I'm very impressed with Comanco Appetite for Innovation. Uh, we were talking about drones for almost two years, and now we're happy to see this. But also, I I'm very impressed, Gregory and Evan, with you. In the same way that, you know, Kaison keep us on track with all these requests for flying and for um, the local point. I know that you are um, very demanding, and, and we like that, with the accuracy. And, you know, we know that we can hit the sub-inch. Um, HSS Aerial was built by um, um, you know, the, the, the vision of, um, behind is uh, Jad Jaros, which is a surveyor. 
and the, we aim to um, you know hit that sub inch as you know because we know that is very relevant for you guys. So um, I'm glad to see that you know that's what you're looking for because we know that we can deliver. But also I like the idea that you guys are looking at the workflow, not just aerial, right? You're trying to put all the things together, but I think that we can be the right partner for you. So uh, I started to get some questions here, um, and I will answer some of them uh, as I go with some of my um, presentation. But again, I want to talk a little bit about the new version. We just learned a new version like uh, two weeks ago and talk about uh, the alpha program. Um, so again, here are the main features. And as you can see, many of them are giving the feedback from guys like Kaison or, or the folks from Comanco. The accuracy report, the checkpoint, checkpoints was Evan asking for that, and we add that. The accuracy report, both companies, and I will show you a quick video, but we have that, and we can even take it to the next level. Uh, that's new. Uh, the local coordinate system, that's something that Kaison asked, and we deliver. Um, so, um, again, that's kind of like um, in the US, I think that you have hundreds of local coordinate systems, and uh, we can check that box now with the new version. And finally, uh, uh, the terrain filtering. This is a new filter where eventually, for example, you can remove uh, stockpiles or vegetation. And I have a quick video. That's a new feature from uh, the new version. Um, so again, since we launched in January, we already deliver uh, two new versions. We hope to launch a new one before the end of the year. Uh, and I will give you some insights. Uh, but again, uh, let me show you this quick video here. Um, we were talking about um, the terrain filtering. So here again, you have the model. Um, this is how it looks, right? This is the UI. You see your flights on the top. Uh, so let's, for example, assume that you wanted to um, remove, you know, a stockpile or certain area from your model that you don't want it to be included in the calculations. That's how you select and filter the area. And you, you can then save it, and as you can see, it's gone. So again, very easy to use, uh, very user friendly. Uh, but this is a feature that uh, we know that is a big thing for you guys. And um, I just wanted to show you uh, a quick video. Uh, here uh, we talk about inspections, right? Um, I have a customer in Canada. He's a ten million dollar contractor. And he told me, JP, I, I asked, how often do you fly? Um, he said, weekly. And I asked, okay, why? You know, because he's not a big contractor. He said, that's exactly why. Um, let me show you this video again. Sorry. Okay, just one second. Okay, so this is how you can perform visual, visual inspections. You know, you have all these. Sorry, just left, right? The main point is, you know, uh, you have all the drone uh, pictures uploaded to the model, and with one click, you can access all the pictures and you can, you know, zoom in in specific areas. But the main point that I was trying to make to you you guys is that this contractor he flies on weekly basis uh, be because he found himself uh, that that's how he defend himself until any complaint as an example he has a claim uh, with a potential change order he was able to go to the software pick the right image as part of the documentation and he was able to get paid half a million dollars as part of a you know a change order that otherwise would be a dispute with the engineer department from the other um uh, side of the of the project so no matter how big or small you are there are many use cases for this software or for drone technology i just wanted to share it with you so you can see what can work for your business um, i'm going to skip this one by going back to evan point and to kaison and greg this is what we have in mind aerial is just one part of our portfolio and we see we are building called the HSS ecosystem. Um, I think that um, Kaison showed how well Aerial worked with Autodesk, AutoCAD. Um, also, Evan mentioned how we work well with Actec. I have a question here from Grant that he's asking me about Trimble. Um, I also happens to manage the 
the partnership side of HSS with companies like Trimble. So we are working with them also to integrate our software with Trimble Business Center and eventually uh, with software like Oracle Primavera for scheduling. Uh, you can also import design files from Bentley. So that's available as we speak. But the good news uh, is that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be integrating you know, Aerial with heavy job, similar to the workflow that Evan was uh, discussing, and also with other software like HSS plans, safety, and heavy bit. So this is our um, plan for integrations. Some are already there, some are coming in the rest of the year. So this is not going to take you know, two or three years. This is happening in the next two, three, four months. Now, the Alpha program that I wanted to mention, you know, before we open up for Q&A, um, this is an opportunity for all of you who are on the other side um, to also, where we can help you to kick off your, or strengthen your drone program. Every week I have, you know, construction guys calling me, like some are saying, hey JP, we have a drone. I said, okay, great, what are you doing? He said, we are just fly flying for marketing, right? They're just taking cool images for marketing and that's fine. That's maybe step number one. Uh, then on the other side, you have guys, guys like Kaison, who is flying maybe on weekly basis, right, or even daily. Uh, you know, Kaison is on the other side, or you also have guys like you know Greg and Evan, who are also very advanced and they have a clear um, understanding of what they want to achieve. Uh, but again, bringing a drone program to your company means different things. You have to have the pilot; it can be in house, can be a third party. You need to have the software, you need to have the processes, you need to understand the legal issues. We want to help you. That's what the Alpha program is good for too. We can work together and we can help you to go there. Another thing is, you know, you will be able to influence kind of like Kaison and Evan and Greg, the product and the integrations. So for some reason, you know, you would like Aerial to be integrated with Dropbox. Okay, great. Let us know, and maybe that's the next integration. We need to add Dropbox because you have all your files in Dropbox, and we need to make it easier. So that's also part of your uh, involvement. Another thing is, you know, you become the champion of your company. Um, again, uh, I want to appreciate, you know, um, Comanco and uh, Interrog, but you guys, Kaison and Evan and Gregory, you are the champion, right? You are the ones who start with this process. Maybe two years, you know, you are uh, bringing LiDAR technology or another cool things, but, you know, people like you, uh, the visionaries, the one who wants to drive change is what is needed in this industry. So we appreciate to see, you know, young people that they want to really bring value to their company and you become the champion of change. Finally, you can share your knowledge, and this is a clear example. I think that we all get better as an industry if we share our knowledge and also if we can have fun and working together. On the left side, you can see companies that we are currently working. Some, they just sign up. Some, we are in conversations. Um, but again, excited um, to work with all of you. That's my email. If you want to uh, enroll or if you want to have a demo of the software, uh, feel free to contact me. That's my phone number. You can text me. Uh, but I wanted to save, you know, 10, 15 minutes for Q&A. So that's pretty much our presentation. And let me read uh, here some of the questions. Uh, but while I read the questions, can you guys, Kaison or Evan or Gregory, um, one of the questions that I have is, how is the process to become a pilot, to become a certified? Can you share some tips with the audience? How was your process? Is it difficult? If you wanna go first, Evan. Sure, yeah, I'll go first. Um... I was fortunate enough that, you know, Mark and Greg sent me to kind of a class, a part 107 course that was kind of a weekend course, Saturday, Sunday, where first they kind of do some hands-on flight training, and then the second day is more focused on actual kind of the test prep of as far as, you know, it's usually fairly basic stuff as far as, you know, safety and not flying over certain areas or people, but it's a couple of little little hard spots that I definitely wouldn't have been able to figure out without that class as far as kind of what airspace, you know, what airport denotes what kind of airspace and kind of how to read weather reports and kind of stuff I really never thought I'd be looking at. But, you know, that's kind of all, it really was as simple as that. I went to a weekend course and then probably studied for a week or two just using the textbooks that I got from that. And then, you know, have you have to sign up for your, for a test. There's, you know, the FAA has a good website where it details out all the testing centers 
you just find one close to you and call them and sign up for a sign up for a time slot. It's a 60 question multiple choice test and all in all it's not too bad. Hopefully that was Kaisen's experience too. <laughs> yeah, for me it's it's about the same. You know, it's it's not quite your what you're expecting for a drone pilot test. Um, but yeah, it's it's as long as you they've got lots of um, information when you go to the FAA's website. Um, I think if the chat is working, I'm gonna post the website um, to become a drone pilot. I just sent it out. Hopefully people can see that. So that's a good place to start. Um, it gives you a lot of information straight from FAA um, and it'll explain the process. And then I know Caesar, he's he's had me help a little bit before with some other uh, people that were interested, but always you're always welcome and free to if you can get your information from JP or Caesar, um, you can always try to contact me. I'll try to help you out the best I can. But yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. I think once you get through the test, everything else is it's it's fairly simple. Awesome. So we have a question from uh, Breeze Satellite. How much is it going to cost and when it will be available? Uh, the software is available for purchase if you want. We can talk offline, but the way that we um, are pricing right now, we have different packages. You can buy a number of flights, and based on the number of flights, you have um, different pricing packages. But that's exactly also what we are in Alpha, in the sense that um, I think that we are very well known in the company for a few things. One is our customer support service also our money back warranty that we are not in this business to take your money guys but also we are trying to deliver value and that's exactly what we are trying to get uh, feedback from you because our vision is to be very bold in this industry so we are looking for people who eventually wants to fly daily and the reason i'm saying this is because if you want to fly daily we want to run the numbers so this become cost effective so um i can share pricing with you not in this presentation it's not the intent but you can email me to that email and i can send you the price list but also I'm looking to know what is your goal. Um, I would like to discuss that with you guys a little bit because I see companies going from quarterly flying to monthly to weekly and then daily. Can you share your insights, how your company went from A to B to C or where you are in the journey and, and what was the driver of that? It was the owner who likes your report. It was the project management. Uh, tell me where you are, where you want to be and where you come from as, as part of the, 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 the experience. And if you want to go first, Kaison. So at, at, like you've mentioned, we, we fly quite often. Um, a lot of our flights come, so a lot of our flights do come from our um, kind of the owners of the company. They say, hey, we would like to have this flight done. Um, but a lot of times we're also getting flights. Um, we do a lot of design work. And so a lot of our flights are coming from that side depending on how many designs we have to do or how many plans we're trying to get submitted. Um, sometimes we've, you know, we start with just a couple of flights. When we first started with HCSS is about one or two flights um, a month. And then we're like, hey, you know what? This is, the owner started to see how powerful it could be. And so that's when they're like, hey, let's, let's see what else we can do. Let's go fly this um, and see what kind of results we get. So it's, it's starting to ramp up. Um, but it did start out slow. It was about, you know, one or two flights a month when we first started. And for you guys, Greg or Evan? I can probably touch on that a little bit because I think it ties into what Evan was saying and what we like about, H, you know, the aerial program itself. A, a big part of it, obviously, you fly it, you have to process it, depending on how big it is. There's a time frame between flight and when you get that data and then being able to distribute it. Um, so a daily flight might be tough if you have to kind of go through the current set because there's really no program out there on the market now that, that expedites that process. Um, but you know, to answer your question, JP, we fly pretty much every day, um, maybe, uh, twice a week or on a weekly basis, I would say for most of our lot, large jobs. Um, and that, that, that right now is, is because of that, you know, when you fly to the data that you get and then to the application, by the time you get that data to the project manager or the owner, 
is it time for the next flight already? Or is it already, you already moved 3,000 yards in between then, and now it's kind of, you know, dated or antiquated data? And uh, that's, that's I think there was, it's an important question to answer because that's part of it. And, and what Ariel and what we're trying to do is kind of shorten that life cycle from, you know, you, you have a plan, you perform it, you fly it again to assess it, and then if you need to adjust, um, so yeah, we're, we're certainly trying to shorten the feasibility, I guess, process of being able to fly more regularly and then more importantly, be able to use that quickly. Um, because it, you can fly every day, but if you can't get the data to use it for anything, it, you're, you're kind of just, you're just flying, right? So, um, and that's what Ariel and we're excited about is, you know, that shortening that cycle from, you know, it's certainly better today even with the piecemealed kind of programs that we need to use and 50 foot on center for a hundred acres, um, but it can get better. And that's what we're working on. Awesome. So one question that I think is good that we can share some ideas is from Brandon Harding. Uh, he's asking, what are some of the specific things accomplished with heavy job e integration? For example, can this data feed into progress quantities or other items? The answer Brandon is, at this point, nothing. We don't have any formal integration. We are on the design phase, but we want to act in the next two or three months. And I would like to share some ideas that we have in mind. But before that, do you mind, Evan and Gregory, because I know that you are a big proponent, what would you like to see, for example, from an aerial to heavy job as a way to help you with the billing in your customers? Um, do you mind sharing that um, workflow that you have in mind? Sure, Evan. Feel free to jump in whenever. But well, like we said, we're we're a we're a user of heavy job. We're a user of heavy bid, and some of the functionality within heavy job is production quantities. Uh, our our business is bid based. You need to be safe and you need to be efficient. Um, so you know each day, you know it, it's kind of a plus or minus more of a percentage that we want if you're relying on you know truck count or something like that. So for us to input on a daily, hopefully daily, certainly weekly, you have to do it monthly for billing. Um, if we can, again, shorten that from flight to more accurate data, that be punched into HCSS heavy job right away. We know what our internal costs are for our manpower and our equipment and how that equates to actual numbers of dirt move. So the integration idea would be to uh, you know, certainly get that data quicker and then have it be kind of a, an automatic import into the specific cost code of your choice if you are a, a heavy job user. And then that in turn, you know, again, talking about the kind of cyclical nature of it, when the project's over, your heavy, you know, your estimators and your bidders can then go back and rely on that data uh, for the next bid opportunity, next scope of work that, that we're going to go after. So. That's, uh, that's good. Uh, we also see a lot of synergies with, you know, um, some of the photos that, you know, they have a geolocation in heavy job that we can relate to the 3D model, for example, or if we can bring some of the 3D model uh, pictures into heavy job, you know, um, iPads for the people in the field to disseminate or make annotations or share notes. So we see a lot of synergy between uh, heavy job and um, uh, aerial and that's what we're going to be working so i encourage you um to join us as part of the alpha so we can make that um part of our roadmap quick question for you guys maybe you can help catherine here i would like for you um are you uh, she's asking what type of drone if you can repeat again are you using and why you decide to use it you know uh, even if it's rtk technology if you can explain what, you know, what is your uh, drone brand and what is the rationale for you to get that drone Tyson, if you want to start yep yeah, sure. So um, I use right now, we've been using the DJI Phantom, or excuse me, DJI Mavic Pro. Um, and then we just got the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. Um, the good thing about these drones is if you're just trying to start off, they work really good. Um, they're not as expensive. They're something that a smaller company can afford um, and then work up to. And so that's that's kind of where we started, where we're just kind of getting into the drone side of things. Um, we just started with the the Mavic Pro and we're starting to look towards other 
options. So we we just got our Phantom 4 Pro. We're going to see how that goes. And that's just the that's probably the lower end of drones when it comes to the abilities um, for surveying and, and using it for HCSS aerial. For sure, hey, I, I can go next. Yeah. So we uh, we started. We've got uh, two DJI Phantom 4 Pros. Those you know did really really good for us. You know they great uh great cameras on them great you know you're really looking for pixel count for photogrammetry and so they've got a really good um megabyte camera on them and so then we kind of just more so for efficiency as we kind of flew more and more as greg kind of stated um we we're just looking for ways to get more efficient and that's why we purchased the the phantom 4 rtk and just because of that that has a base station or you can kind of connect to like a local dot kind of network and that will kind of give you better corrections already than versus just you know flying a drone without any corrections and so we found that when we fly that we have to put down a lot less ground control and checkpoints and then tag a lot less on the back end and so that's kind of saving us time on both sides of our flights and we've we've seen it be you know we were putting down maybe 10 to 15 control and checkpoints prior to purchasing it and then now we're putting down maybe four to five and getting you know the same if not better accuracy after doing that and so that's been a really good purchase for us and then finally we've got a matrice 600 pro which kind of is a heavier duty drone you can kind of put any kind of camera or video camera on there and we use that more for when we're taking pictures or videos for marketing specifically as far as you know getting a really nice camera up in the sky and being able to take good quality like photos for our social media and for our you know website Awesome. I'm going to answer some of the questions. One from uh, Breeze. Can you compare flights to a design surface? The answer is yes. Uh, you know, you can import a design file from Bentley or AutoCAD and you can compare the design to your actual flights. Um, someone is also is asking about um, if the, we have a limit in terms of images. Uh, the answer is yes. We have different packages, you know, up to 1,000 images, which is for small sites. Um, to up to 5,000. Uh, the good news is that, you know, for 500, 600 images, the processing time is less than 24 hours, could be up to three, four, five hours, which I think is uh, pretty good. Um, and we are trying even to get better. Let's see. Um, quick question for you guys. Um, I know many, some of you are working, are you guys working with some uh, DOTs in the projects? Because uh, we are seeing some of our customers also uh, seeing that the DOT projects are for some specific um, um, infrastructure projects, they are require uh, 3D um, software, right, to, to, to report progress. Do you have any job that is actually mandated by the owner to, to use this technology? Or do you see that evolving in the industry? We saw that, for example, in Arizona, the DOT of Arizona, for some specific jobs, in order to beat, you need to have 3D software as part of your um, technology stack. But I'm just wondering if you if you see that in, in your markets in Florida or Utah. Greg, no? Nope. Okay. Not at the moment, JP. We, we, although I will say um, that feature and having the progress has helped us out a lot. Uh, you, you gave a, an anecdote before an example about, you know, maybe a, a discrepancy between owner or change order or something like that. We're seeing more and more a request from owners um, for more regular products or uh, progress photos and, and 3D imaging. Um, we do commercial construction as well, and, and we utilized it pretty heavily um, on kind of structural stuff. Um, and then also kind of in the inspection arena whether it be pipelines, uh, for us, it's big gypsum stacks down here in Florida. Um, you're really able to, to use that data for then the client to be able to, to, you know, either design or figure out what their next, you know, bid package needs to look like for the next project. So um, not specifically DOT, uh, but certainly same in principle for a lot of things that, that are out there. Okay. Um, the last question here is um, if we, HSS area, yes, we do have automatic ground control point detection. That's a feature that, you know, uh, we think is pretty advanced. So after you do the, the marking of the ground control point once, the software 
self recognize the ground control point for upcoming flights. So that's it on my side, Elizabeth. I think that uh, we are on time, right? It's almost 3 p.m. I wanted to, again, um, thank you guys. And I wanted to thank, um, you know, the HSS aerial team. I know you mentioned Cesar, uh, Daniel, Itai, Jat, uh, Tal, uh, Ron. Uh, we are a big team working to make this a success. And we're going to bring more people in the next six to um, 12 months. So we're very excited with the journey. Um, again, do you have any final comment, um, Gregory, if you have um, just a few, few words to, to wrap up this presentation? Sure. I want to thank you as well, JP. You've been uh, thanking everyone else, instrumental in this, obviously, and uh, really looking forward to continuing this progress. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Evan? No, same thing. Same thing, kind of like what Kyson said. If anyone else has any specific questions, feel free to, you know, get our contact information from JP, and we're more than happy to help out. I got plenty of help when I was trying to figure out from other people, so be happy to pass it on. Yeah, happy to share the contact information. You guys send me an email, and we will share the recording, but also um, I can share the speaker um, presentation. And my friend Kyson. Uh, few words in your birthday. I know you're busy today, but uh, any other comments? No, I think uh, Gregory and Evan really summed it up. I think, again, if, if anyone needs help, don't, you know, feel free to contact us. And then again, thank you, JP, for everything that you've done. It's, you've been instrumental in making this possible. So we, we've very, very much enjoyed um, HCSS Aerial. So. Awesome. Thank you. Same here. Elizabeth, I don't know if you're there. Thanks again for your help. I think that we are ready to go. Yep, thank you guys. Thank you everyone for joining. I hope everyone has a great day and we look forward to having you guys join um, future webinars.